Hello, hello, welcome back as we start to dive into the new world of Microsoft Fabric. I know everyone's still reeling from announcements this week with Microsoft Build, but I thought we'll start actually starting trying to explain some of these concepts, dig into some of these things, the decisions you're going to have to make as you start to become a fabricator. I like fabricator, I think we might use the word fabricator going on. So, we have this whole new platform. We've got lots of different workloads, lots of different new artifact types. If you log into what was once just solo Power BI, you've now got a whole load of different artifacts you'll see inside your workspace. So which one do you use? What, what's the difference? How do things come together? I think the biggest bit of confusion we're going to see inside Fabric is people saying, should I build a lake house or a warehouse? Should I use Synapse Data Engineering to go to build a lake house artifact? Or should I use Synapse Data Warehousing to build a warehouse artifact? And what does that actually mean? So this episode, we're going to have a look into those two concepts at a very high level, talk about the difference between the two different compute workloads, and talk about the artifacts that were created as a result. But that's the plan. As always, if you are new around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're going to be doing tons and tons of these videos as we dig into the world of fabric. But yeah, let's let's have a bit of a look at things. So yeah, as we introduced earlier this week, we have the whole idea of fabric based on one lake, and we've got these different workload types, each of which can have its own different artifacts that can created inside of your fabric workspace. Now the two we're going to have a bit of a comparison of today is our Synapse Data Engineering and our Synapse Data um, Warehousing. Now they're doing essentially the same thing. Now the thing to be really, really important, when we get a warehouse uh, artifact and we get some data held as tables inside our warehouse, and when we have a lake house artifact and we have data held inside our lake house as lake house tables, they're both held within the one lake, and they're both held as parquet in the delta format. So they're exactly the same in terms of the data that's held down on your lake. So whichever direction you go, the end result is actually data held in the same way in the same format, with the same performance optimization, all of that good stuff. So I guess the good news is, don't worry too much Yes, there are differences in the engine, the different types of people and the persona who'd be using the engines, but actually the end result should be the same. Now we'll talk about that in a second, because semantics. But main thing is, same thing under the hood. So what is the difference? If we take these two as high level things and go, oh, are they on, if they're creating the same object, aren't they the same thing? Well, one, Data engineering is based on Spark. So you have Spark notebooks. You write code in a notebook with various cells, and you code it in that style. On the data warehousing side, you're all writing SQL queries and store procs. It's working in a much more traditional way that you're used to working if you're coming from a SQL development background. Now that does mean, because one's using a Spark engine, one is using a SQL engine, you've got a difference in languages that you can write. So if you're on the engineering side and you've got a Spark notebook, you can write in Python, you can write in R, you can write in Scala, and you can write in Spark SQL. Now, we need to be really clear, that is not T-SQL. This is a slightly different flavor of SQL that's packaged into Spark. Now, in reality, they're very, very similar. You've got a load of ANSI standards baked into it. It's basically like writing like normal SQL that you're used to. But because it's not T-SQL, it's actually a little bit closer to MySQL. Um, you'll actually see there's a few syntax differences. If you've got spaces in your column names, instead of wrapping it in square brackets as we would in Microsoft SQL Server, you've got to wrap it in backticks. It's not a crazy thing to get used to, but there's just some minor syntax differences if you're going to try and start using Spark SQL, you need to be aware of. On the other side of the fence, on the data warehousing thing, it's full T-SQL support. You've got full DDL, DML support. You can use a lot of the commands you've already got. But they both write data into objects, and they both write delta in the form of parquet in the delta format into your lake. However, when you look inside Fabric and you look at the artifacts that could create it inside of your workspace, on the engineering side, you're going to see a lake house, and it's going to have lake house tables in there. On the warehousing side, you're going to see a warehouse, and it's going to have warehousing tables in there. Again, both of those artifacts 
It's just Parquet in the Delta format in the lake, but you'll see them labeled and marked as different types of object when you are inside your particular workspace. So be a little careful. But they're slightly different in terms of what you see. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, it means we can kind of mix and match because they're the same thing. So we could have a bit of Python writing into some lake house tables and then some T-SQL writing into some warehouse tables. And then we could have another warehouse which is just doing selects and writing some queries based on those other tables. They can read each other's data. So I can read from a lake house table and then combine it with some tables in my warehouse. I can read from my warehouse and combine it with some tables in my lake house. I can mix and match. So we're going to start seeing people building out some architectures, which actually is the blend that they want to. So if we talk medallion architecture, medallion architecture, you get a lot in the world of lakes. And it's essentially saying I'm going to have a layer called bronze and that's going to have my raw uncleaned data in there. Going to have a layer called silver, and that's going to have my cleaned up, validated, ready to use data, and a layer called gold, which is my nice, curated, aggregated, maybe star schemered data in there. Now, traditionally, we've had to make a choice. You've had to say, well, either I'm going to go all Spark and do it all in Spark, or I'm going to do it all in SQL. And there's compromises you've had to make there. Um, but what actually we can see is, well, maybe I'm going to write some real framework, I'm going to write some dynamics, some metadata-driven Python to get data into my bronze layer. I'm going to use some metadata-driven cleaning to clean it up and get it into my silver layer. But then all of my logic, all of my business logic for my facts and dimensions, well, I've already got that as T-SQL held in my existing data warehouse. So actually, I can just lift and shift that T-SQL and then just have that as a my gold data warehouse. But reading from those lake house tables, so I can mix and match these different workloads as I see fit to make sure it actually fits how I want to work, the what I've already got in terms of existing legacy code and the kind of people who are going to be working with it. Or I might look at that and go, well, you know what? I want to keep everything in the same way and I want to use some other elements of Spark. And so we'll do it all as a lake house or all as a warehouse. It's fairly flexible in that you can do it how you want. Now, it's like with great power comes great responsibility. With great flexibility and choice comes agonizing indecision. Which one should you actually use? Now, I realize I am fully biased in this because I am a Spark person. I spend my life writing Spark code. So I'm, I would obviously pick up and go, well, I'm just going to write it in Spark. If I've got the choice and it makes no difference, I might as well stick with Spark. But I'm not building it for me. And you're not building it for me. So... It's all about who should be using it, who should be supporting it, and what skills you have at the moment. So as a real quick highlighted kind of thing, if we're talking about you want something that's dynamic and metadata driven, you want to build a framework. I want to have a single script which can clean any bit of data, and then I want to feed rules and make that dynamic. That's going to be on the Spark side. So if you're talking about dynamic metadata driven code, that is going to be on your data engineering side. If we're talking about your machine learning, I need to plug into a ML, ML model really nicely. You can do it on the warehousing side. It's just you're using the same languages if you're on the Spark side. If you're dealing with really, really nasty, gnarly, kind of nested arrays of JSON or sort of horrible data types you haven't to unpick and expand, it's going to be slightly nicer to work with that on the Spark side. And if you're doing some really, really, really complex transformations, it's usually nicer to do that on the Spark side. You can pull in additional uh, libraries. You can write functions and then reuse them that are slightly different to how you do that on kind of scale our function kind of things on the SQL side. So generally, when you get to a point of complexity and size and scale and have big data style problems, it's going to be all on your engineering side of things. On the warehousing side, yeah, we've got full DML DDL support. We can treat it like a normal SQL server. We can do lots of the really good mature things that we've had in Microsoft SQL Server for years and years and years, where we have all that richness and all that functionality. Uh, we can plug into it from T-SQL tools. So we can connect via from our favorite uh, development environments and go and do that, which you can't necessarily do on the Spark side. Uh, it's got com complex transactional support. Now, we're, kind of, we're, we're waiting to see what this actually looks like, uh, but the ability to manage transactions, the ability to do that, you have an element of that baked into Delta, that underlying format, because it supports uh, ACID compatibility. But 
big complex transactions isn't a thing you ever see on the spark side of things you're gonna need to be on the warehouse side of things if you have that kind of scenario and yet if you've already built a warehouse on existing azure synapse analytics and you've got all that code i mean you should be able to migrate that and just lift and shift it into a synapse data uh, warehouse workload so it all depends on context it depends on content it depends on what you're trying to do and who you're doing it for generally who's developing it developer developering words are they pure sql or are they uh more of a data engineer they know a bit of python they know some automation frameworks they want to be able to have things very very slick uh how much data are you planning on pulling into it how do you need to write it in such a way that you can automate it and make it dynamic that could be a more sparky thing or actually you've already got a lot of the logic you don't imagine it's going to change it too much in the future you can do it on the warehousing side and it's easy and you understand it and it's you don't have to learn anything new so you've got these choices ahead of you when you're pulling into things are you using the engineering sparky side of the fence are you building a lake house or are you on the data warehousing side of the fence you're just using t-sql and you're building a warehouse that's your option now the one minor gripe the one my little grumble here is that it's all a lake house it's all data stored in a lake that we're putting a relational database style structure on top of and exposing that to our users both of those are lake house approaches so actually uh, when i say do you want to build a lake house or a warehouse either way you're building a lake house it's just are you presenting it as if it was a sql warehouse even though it's still a lake house or are you presenting it as if it was a spark built lake house which is also still a lake house they're still the same thing the data is stored in the same way it's accessible in the same way now the one caveat the one thing you do need to be aware of across all of this stuff is whichever method you've chosen that's how you need to maintain and update those tables going forwards so if you've built something as a lake house object you can't use your t-sql warehouse object to insert data into that lake house object so it's you pick which side of the fence you're on so this object i'm always going to update this in spark this object i'm always going to update this in sql they can read from each other you can combine all the data together really easily but you can only write to it from the type that it is whether it's a engineering or warehousing side of the fence whether it's a lake house artifact or a warehouse artifact there's a limitation that we've seen currently so yeah big decisions when you're getting started with fabric when you're starting to pull this stuff together you need to put a bit of thought into going well how do i want this process to flow who's going to be looking after it where do i see it going in the future do you invest in building something a bit more dynamic a bit more framework it's going to take you longer to build it at first but then as you add more data in they'll just get faster and faster and faster because you're reaping the benefits of automation or are you building something real simple real fast get it in there write it in sql start using it get it into power bi get it exposed to your users start getting value from your data yeah so hopefully that has helped clear things up a little bit um certainly i know it's going to be a big decision it's going to be a lot on people's minds uh, as people get started with fabric as they open up that box and they see all of the different goodies you've got inside there i know there's a lot but remember regardless of whether you go lake house or warehouse getting into power bi it's all the same stuff combine all that data doesn't actually matter if it's a mix and match of different approaches for the right people that team is actually more sequely they're going to look after themselves they're going to use a warehouse that team's really sparky they're going to develop a solution they're going to build a lake house we just stitch them together in the end and it's fine cool so we'll be doing a whole bunch of these fabric themed videos digging through the product looking at things looking at how people react to it and what feedback we get from people talking about it and yeah stay tuned for more we'll catch you next time cheers